Howdy, folks. Uh, my name's Eric, and I'm here today to talk to you about Food Chain Magnate. Food Chain Magnate is a board game for two to five players. It's an economic simulation game in which you're going to be taking the mantle of a food chain magnate. You're going to be owning a food chain. You're going to be marketing products. You're going to be gashing prices. You're going to be bringing in uh, customers. And whoever has the most money at the end of the game when the bank runs out uh, wins the game. So let's take a look at this game and how it's going to be played. So this is a good video to watch if you are maybe going to a game night tonight and you're going to be playing this game. I'm going to be going over uh, most of how the game is played. I'm not going to cover every single rule in the rule book, and I'll point you to the rule book when there's stuff in there that you should read yourself. But, uh, but this should give you a nice broad overview of the game so that you can get down to the table and, and feel ready to play, feel ready to jump in. Food Chain Magnate is a very interesting game. It's got a very kind of bland aesthetic to it. Uh, it almost looks like a prototype. I mean, the back of the box doesn't even have anything written on it. Uh, so it's kind of a throwback uh, in a lot of ways. But it's got one of my favorite gaming accessories included in the box. And that's these uh, menus. And so when I'm explaining the game to people, this menu makes the game so much simpler to understand and comprehend. And so this is what I'm gonna to use to kind of walk you through the game. But basically this is an economic simulation game. And you're gonna be the CEO of a company. You are going to be hiring people. You're gonna to wanna to hire the right people at the right time. You're going to want to have those people working at the right time in order to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. And you might even wanna fire some of them strategically so that you can free up cash to invest in other things. Um, basically, I think that this game was designed because somebody was like, hey, what if we made an org chart a board game? <laughs> And that's what you're doing here. You're making an org chart into a board game. Um, so there are a ton of employees that you could potentially hire in this game, and they are listed on the inside of this menu. Every single one of these people is somebody that you can hire. Um, and I'm going to go through uh, just about everybody on this chart and give you kind of a broad overview of what everybody does. But before we get there... Let's start with the very beginning of the game because this is kind of the essence of the game. You're gonna be hiring employees every single turn, but you need to decide which employees you're gonna have employed and working during that turn and which employees you're gonna have at the beach. And at the beach basically means they're on vacation, they're not doing their work, they're away from their cell phones, they're getting their R&R, &R. don't worry about them. Worry about your employees that are currently in your org chart. So let's take a look at how the org chart is structured. All right, so this is uh, you. You are the CEO of your company. And you can have, at the beginning of the game, three people working under you, and you can hire one person per turn. So eventually you'll be hiring a lot of people, and you'll just put them underneath your uh, CEO card like this. Now you can have other managers below you who can have little org charts of their own, like this management trainee can have two people underneath the management trainee, just like that. So you can build out your org chart like this. Now, management trainees can only, and other managers can only be directly under the CEO. So you can't have a manager down here, but you can have a manager here, here, and here if you wanted to. You could have three more uh, managers, management trainees, uh, all the way up to junior vice presidents and so on and so forth underneath your CEO so that you can fill out tons of people here on the bottom. So basically at the beginning of the game, you're going to have uh, just you as a CEO and you're going to be hiring up more and more people throughout the game. Eventually you'll have a big old stack of people. In fact, you might have more people Access, accessible to you, then you can even employ because you don't have enough spots in your org chart to employ everybody. So what you're going to do at the beginning of the, your turn, and this is the restructuring phase, which is at the top of your menu here. What you're going to do at the beginning of your turn is you're going to secretly decide how many of your players you want to be at work for that turn and then secretly decide how many of your players you want to be at the beach and at the beach means that they are not performing their duties you don't get the bonuses for those players um 
and they're not in your org chart. Um, you still have to pay them if they're at the beach because you know they're on vacation. You still got to pay your, your employees who are on vacation, but uh, but they're over here at the beach, not actually in your org chart. So that's the restructuring phase. Um, then you'll build out your org chart once everybody has kind of secretly played those cards. You'll build out your org chart. And that means that you are now in the order of business phase, which is this number two on your menu. Order of business phase basically means that you count how many empty slots you have in your org chart. So right now, I don't have any empty spots in my org chart. I, you can see I have these three spots filled up, and I also have these two spots filled up. However, if I, for example, move this and put this person at the beach instead of employing them for the turn, I'd have one empty spot. And if I took two, I'd have two empty spots and so on and so forth. Now, why would you want empty spots? That's kind of weird. Well, it's because that dictates the order of business. So the order of business phase, uh, starting with the player who has the most empty spots, you get to pick your turn order for that round. Um, and first choice goes to the person with the most empty spots and so on and so forth moving through. Uh, now, you may want to go first in the round, but you may, may actually want to go last in the round as well because things that other players do might affect the way that you play for the round. So, you know, having these empty spots, it gives you a lot of versatility um, in figuring out where you want to go and kind of what strategy you want to employ for the round. And now we get to the bread and butter, and that's these two phases here. These are the bread and butter of the game. That is your working nine to five phase and your dinner time phase. These are the two phases where you basically do almost everything in the game. So uh, just kind of refer to your little handy dandy sheet here and we'll go down it and we'll uh, talk about what each um, what each uh, phase does in the working nine to five five phase in player order each player does all of the following steps so uh, so you do all of your steps then then next player and the next player and so on and so forth um, so the first thing that you do is you recruit employees so like I said your CEO allows you to hire one employee per round now, if you employ a recruiting girl, then you can hire two people per round. If you employed three recruiting girls, you could employ four, you, would, you could hire four people per round. So hiring uh, recruiting girls uh, really kind of exponentially grows your ability to hire every round. Um, it's, it's highly recommended to do that. And hiring is an interesting kind of process here. Basically, you can hire anybody who's listed here on this leftmost side of the menu board. You can hire any of these people. Um, and once you hire a person, they go directly to your beach. You hire them and they go to your beach. Um, now, anybody who is located here on this, the rest of the board here, this big old chunky part, those people uh, have to be trained up. So you basically need to get your entry level positions here and then you need to train them up to get them up to, to this part. So when you're in your hiring phase, you can hire as many people as you are able to in this left-hand column and you get to put them directly into your beach. The next phase, uh, is train employees. So to train an employee, you need a trainer. You need a trainer. And the way that you train an employee is you basically just say, hey, I've got one trainer. I could train one employee. And then you train up that employee. Now, in order for an employee to be trained, they need to be in the beach. You can't train an employee who is currently working in your org structure. These people are working, man. They don't have time to train. There's no training on the job over here. So so you get to train up one person who is in your beach. Now, you just hired somebody potentially, and you just put that person in your beach. Can you hire that person that you just hired? Yes, you can. So that's something, it's kind of a fast track way of, of upgrading your people um, is to hire somebody and then immediately train them up. So let's take a look at this menu board. In fact, I'm gonna switch to this view here so that I can look at you and talk about this. Um, 
so let's take a look at this menu board. Uh, so you can see that there's a lot of arrows in here. And basically, the arrows dictate who can be trained up to what position. Um, and all of these left-hand columns are basically your entry-level employees, and then they just get better and better as they go along. So your kitchen trainee starts off only making one burger. You could get them all the way up to a burger chef who makes eight burgers per round. Um, your marketing trainee starts off only putting up one billboard. You can get them all, all the way up where they're doing radio ads for you, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, all of these um, positions up here while they follow kind of a path, like the trainer kind of goes up to be a coach, kind of goes up to be a guru, you can't actually train a trainer directly up this way. In fact, all of these positions here need to be hired or need to be trained up from a management trainee. So that makes the management trainee the most versatile and probably the most important uh, employee in the game because while a uh, errand boy can be trained up to a Zeppelin pilot, a management trainee can be trained up to a junior vice president, to a luxuries manager, to a discount manager, to an HR director, to a CFO, to basically everybody on this top of this chart. They all get trained out of this management trainee. And other positions like the recruiting girl, which we covered before, like the trainer, like we covered before, they actually have no upward mobility at all. It's the sad the sad uh, existence of a trainer or a recruiting girl is that they they can't they have no career pro progression. Um, just keep in mind that if you're training, you could basically train up one step with one trainer. and also uh, you can't use multiple trainers on the same person to keep training them up <laughs> um, unless you get a special ability, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the game. The next thing you could do is initiate marketing campaigns. So your marketing campaigns are executed by your marketers, which are these handy dandy blue cards. Um, so you need to have one of these guys in your org chart in order to initiate a marketing campaign. The next thing that you need is to actually use the map. So let's, let's get a map tile out. So marketing is done with a marketer, which are these blue cards. Um, start off with a marketing trainee, can be trained all the way up to a brand director. And the, the bigger they get, the better their campaigns go, the more people that they reach. But let's just see how it works right here with a marketing trainee. So marketing trainee can place a billboard and the billboard has to be placed uh, only up to two squares. That's what this little two up here, two squares uh, from your current location. So you could place it here, which would be zero squares here, which would be one square or here, which would be two squ squares. Um, and you get to place a billboard max duration two. So the way that you would do this is you would take a billboard tile. So this is the small billboard tile. There's, they come in all different shapes and sizes. And then you're going to put that next to a house. So there we go, it's right next to a house. Um, it says max duration is two, which means that you just take whatever good that you want to advertise, and you can pick any good in the game, burgers, pizza, beer, lemonade, or cola, and you put two of those onto the billboard. And, and that'll signify that it has a duration of two. You'll then take your marketing trainee, you'll take him out of your org chart, put him over here, and put the number that corresponds to the billboard. So this says number 15, right? Put that number onto the marketing training. Now he's over here and uh, he's gonna be occupied with this marketing campaign until the marketing campaign is completed. And we'll talk about how these houses consume the marketing campaigns uh, in a later step, but that's how you initiate a marketing campaign. All right, up next, you get to get food and drinks. So get food and drinks is done by using either uh, cooks or by using errand boys. So cooks all start off as kitchen trainees and uh, errand boys are your drink fetchers. So um, they start off as kitchen trainees and errand boys and you basically just do what it says on the card. So, uh, kitchen trainee they can produce one burger or one pizza of your choice you just take that and you put it into a bank um put just put that in front of you uh 
Same thing with Aaron Boys. Get one drink of any one type. So you can take one cola, one lemonade, or one beer. Just like the other positions, these positions can be trained up. So your uh, kitchen trainee could be trained up to be a burger chef or a pizza chef. Um, and your uh, errand boys can be trained up to be truck drivers, basically delivery guys, to go pick up things. I'm going to leave you to read how these all function in the rule book. It's pretty, pretty simple to understand. But basically, you get more stuff. All right, up next, we've gotten our food, and we get to place new houses and gardens. <laughs> so this is a very weird thing about this game. You are not just running a fast food empire. You're also running a real estate business because people know marketing is one thing, but building a market is another thing. So you can actually build houses uh, in this game. Um, and you can actually upgrade people's houses as well. So the way that you do that is you need to hire a management trainee and you need to train them up to be a new business developer. If you have a new business developer in your org chart, then you can place a new home or garden. So you can put the house basically wherever you want. It just needs to be connected to a road somehow. So you, and you know, you can't place it on top of a road. You can't place it on top of another restaurant or on top of a, of a dispensary of, of cola or beer. So it's gotta be in an empty space on the board, but you can basically put it wherever you want. And it's very, very simple. The way that you do that is you just put it on the board wherever you want it to go. The other thing that you could do is you could place a garden on a house. And once again, that's very simple. You just need your new business developer, same guy, uh, pretty much the same process. It's just in lieu of placing a house, you place a garden and that garden, it just needs to be in an empty spot. So, you know, you can't place a garden on top of a, you know, a billboard or anything like that. But, uh, but you just place it and and now that that house is going to be worth double. So gardens are are uh, they they they're good for you. They'll they'll get you a lot more cash. All right, and then finally you get to place or move restaurants. The way that you do that is you hire yourself a management trainee and you train them all the way up to a local manager or to a regional manager. And if you hire the, them up to those, you can either uh, place a new restaurant with a local manager and you can move one of your restaurants using a regional manager. Also, when these guys are in your org chart, they turn your restaurants into drive throughs which means that they have an entrance on all sides. That's really important for both access. Uh, it, may, it may make clo uh, houses closer to you and families closer to you so that they'll come to you. Um, and it also, uh, gives you access points to go out and, and do deliveries and that sort of thing. So regional managers and local managers are very important in terms of kind of advanced game stuff, moving your restaurants around and, and maximizing your, uh, board presence. So we've pretty much covered everybody in the org chart. Um, there's just a couple more I want to go over. So we have the waitress and the waitress, uh, will get you $3 at the end of every sale sale round. Um, and also breaks ties. So kind of a good little accoutrement to your org chart by having waitresses. And then the other thing is pricing managers and uh, pricing managers will reduce the cost of your goods by $1 when you sell them. Um, and we'll, you'll, you'll see the benefit of that rather soon. Um, and then they can be basically the, the, the better versions of these price managers or luxury managers actually increase the cost of your goods by $10. And then the discount manager who decreases it by $3. You're going to start getting into pricing wars pretty quickly in this game. And so these price manipulators will help you a lot. Um, and then finally, the last one I want to talk about is the CFO. The CFO gives you a 50% cash bonus at the end of every sale round. So all the money you make, you then make another 50% on top of that. So the CFO is a huge part of the game. You really need a CFO um, if you're going to be competitive in this game. So I highly recommend getting tr working your way up to the CFO. Um, and you would need a management trainee and train them one, two, three, four steps up to the CFO. So th that's pretty much all the employees that you have. I think it's dinner time. All right, so dinner time is when houses go out and get their 
foods. So let's say that this house wants lemonade. They have this lemonade billboard next to them and they really want lemonade. And this restaurant has lemonade and this restaurant also has lemonade. So how does this house choose which restaurant to go to? Well, the base price of all goods in this game is $10. So this restaurant right now is selling it for $10 and this restaurant is selling it for $10. But this restaurant is zero squares away from this house. Um, they're on the same square, so they're zero squares away. And this restaurant is one square away from this house. So for every square that you the, the house is away from the restaurant, you basically add $1 to perceived value on top of your price. So this house will see this restaurant as selling this lemonade at $10. They'll actually see this restaurant as selling it at $11 because it's one square away. Now, if the house went here for lemonade, let's say that this restaurant actually doesn't have any lemonade in stock and they went to this how they went to this restaurant, that that lemonade would still only cost $10. They would see it as $11 because they're spending a dollar on gas to get there. But this restaurant would only get $10 for that lemonade. Now, what can this restaurant do to make itself more attractive to these lemonade wanting households? Well, what it can do is it can get a pricing manager. And if it has a pricing manager in its org chart, now its lemonade is only $9. So they're going to see going here as one dollar worth of gas to get there and back um but when they get there they only have to spend nine dollars on it there's perceived value of ten dollars here and there's perceived value of ten dollars here to the consumer so how do they decide because that's a tie well the way that they decide is first off by whoever has the most waitresses in their org chart so if this guy the the uh the fried goose and donkey if he has uh, a pricing manager bringing his price down to $9 and he has a waitress, he now has tied with this restaurant and he has the tiebreaker, which is most waitresses. If they don't have any waitresses and they're both $10 in perceived value, then you will go to your turn order track and who's ever higher on the turn order track will get the customer. So this turn order track has a lot of things going for it in the game. Now, there's a lot of other bonuses that can be applied to your food. And some of those uh, affect the perceived value. Some of them only affect value after the fact. So please, please refer to the manual and refer to the other cards as to what the prices are for different goods. Um, like I mentioned earlier, there's a, there's a luxuries manager which you can have. And that luxuries manager actually increases the cost of your goods by $10. But if you're the only person in town who has lemonade and there's one family in town and they want that lemonade, they're going to pay $20 for that lemonade because they want that lemonade so badly. So I highly recommend that you take a look at the manual and take a look at all of those bonus cards because that's going to really change the prices of products. Uh, one other thing that I need to mention is that dinner time always executes in order of the number of houses. Uh, so house number 16 will execute after house number 14. That's why all these houses have numbers and that'll come into play because inventory will start to run out. So maybe I have lemonade for house 16, but once I get my, give up my lemonade to house 16, uh, and house 17 comes along, they also want lemonade. I'm out of lemonade. So they might go somewhere else for that lemonade. Okay. So we've done dinner time. Now we get to do the payday. So the payday is very simple. Everybody on your org chart who isn't a entry level employee needs to be paid $5 every round. Now there's a lot of cards in here and there's bonus cards that may allow you to uh, skirt around paying some of those salaries. But basically if they have a little dollar sign down here, they need to be paid $5. They need to be paid that $5, whether they're at the beach or whether they're in your org chart. Um, they also need to be paid uh, five dollars if they're executing marketing campaigns. So all of your employees need to be paid five dollars around, um, and that five dollars goes back into the bank that that uh, that everybody is is using. All right. Up next we have marketing campaigns. So marketing campaigns execution is very simple. So let's just say we place this marketing campaign down here. 
uh, let's say that this these people got their lemonade this turn, so they don't have a lemonade on them. Executing a marketing campaign basically just means you take a lemonade from the billboard, you place it onto a house, and now you can see the demand for that house. A house by itself can only have three uh, three pieces of demand on it. If the house has a garden, then that house uh, can have five pieces of demand on it. So that's how you execute marketing campaigns. And finally, cleanup. So cleanup happens. Uh, you discard all of the food or drinks that you generate this turn but did not sell. Basically, everything spoils. So you don't get to keep any of the food carrying over to the next night. Nobody wants to eat a day-old hamburger, right? So uh, all of the food that you sell basically needs to be made in the turn that you sell it. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, you then take all your employee cards back into your hand um, and you take uh, any milestones that were in here. Any milestones that were covered during this game, you take those out of play. So milestones is kind of the, the last part of this game that is really important. Um, and the milestones are all listed on the very back of your menu card. Now, these are the game-breaking things that happen in the game. And if you're the first person to do just about anything in the game, you're going to get a bonus that breaks the game. And this is where Food Chain Magnet becomes very, very interesting because this is going to help you make your decisions throughout the game. You're going to want to get, you're going to want to be the first to train someone so you get a 15% discount on salaries. You don't have to pay $15 worth of salaries. That's an amazing, amazing thing, especially early game. Um, if you're the first person to make $100, you get a CFO for free. Remember how I talked about how important a CFO is well you get one for free if you do if you uh if you sell a hundred dollars worth of food um and so on and so forth these are incredible bonuses to the game and once somebody has claimed these bonuses they get turned over and removed from the game and nobody else can get them now you can get them the same turn as somebody else if two people uh make a hundred dollars total during the same turn then they both get that CFO bonus, but then nobody else can get it for the rest of the game. So um, this is a very important part of that turn order because you're going to want to keep an eye on what other people are doing because, oh uh, gosh, you know, I want to meet, I want to be one of the first people to hire three people in one turn because you get those two free management trainees. I want to do that, but I could see that he's going for the uh, the first burger marketed, which gives you a five dollar bonus on all burgers. And I want that too. And maybe I should change my strategy up and get that because I don't want to be left in the dust on that. So take a look at all of these. These are game-breaking abilities, and they will make the game extremely interesting. So keep an eye on these um, because this is kind of where the bread and the butter of Food Chain Magnet is made. And that's the game, guys. That is the game. I think that you have enough now. Uh, to at least get to the get to the table and play. Uh, hopefully, at least one person has read the rule book completely, so they can uh, fill in any gray areas. But uh, but that's food chain magnate. The way that you win the game, by the way, is you have the most money at the end of the game, um, and you get to decide whether you want the game to be short, medium, or long. Um, so you're going to have some agency over that, um, and. Basically, when all of the money has run out, whoever has the most money wins the game. And like I said, it takes about two two to four hours to do that. Uh, just some final thoughts on this game. Like I said, this game is interesting in that the aesthetic is pretty... The level of aesthetics is pretty low on this game. It looks like a prototype, in my opinion. But the gameplay shines so brightly that honestly, it does not matter at all what the game looks like. This game is an amazing, amazing game. Um, one of the things that I do recommend is using poker chips. The game comes with paper money, but I would I would highly recommend supplementing that with poker chips. It's going to help you a lot with uh, with managing the bank and so forth. Um, and also, it, it helps you see how much money is left in the bank uh, pretty well. I'm very excited for you that you get to go play this game for the first time because I know when I played the game for the first time, 
uh, my mind was spinning the entire night afterward. And then I was online and I was looking up strategies and I was looking up tech trees and I was like, how do, how do we, how do I optimize my gameplay? And there's so many different ways to play. Like there is no one optimal way to play because the way that you play will have a huge impact on the way that other people will play. Um, and it's just the type of game that you can play over and over and over again. I would say, please don't be intimidated by this game. Um, it is classified as a heavy Euro, but the Rubik is actually not that big. Um, and the gameplay is actually fairly straightforward. You know, there's a lot of elements involved, but the gameplay itself starts to flow pretty quickly after one or two turns. Um, and there's a lot more advanced Euro games. I would say that even a game like Terra Mystica probably has more to wrap your head around from a gameplay perspective than this game does. Uh, from a strategy perspective, however, this game is extremely deep. So uh, so hats off to, to Splatter for this game. Um, if you want to see more of these videos, let me know. Let me know other games that you'd like me to uh, give overviews on. And I love your feedback. Put that in the comments below. And until next time, guys, have fun playing Food Chain Magnet.